Hello, welcome to lecture number 28. Today we're going to talk about uh, second generation antipsychotic medications. This is the second lecture on antipsychotic medications where we will cover uh, the second generation uh, antipsychotics, their side effects, as well as alternative uses for these drugs. Please remember these lectures are for educational purposes only. Please consult your physician or pharmacist for any questions about your medications or any drugs you might take. Here is what we'll cover today in this particular lecture of second generation antipsychotics, their side effects, and some new developments and other uses for antipsychotic medications. So we'll start with the um, sort of big dog of the second generation antipsychotics, clozapine or clozarel. Uh, reduces symptoms in about 30% of those who do not improve with standard drugs. Produces very little Parkinsonism side effects or tardive dyskinesia. So patients uh, who could not tolerate those other drugs because of these side effects uh, can be helped by clozapine. Uh, this drug also may help reduce negative symptoms. So there are a lot of advantages to using this drug. Unfortunately, it does come with a pretty significant side effect uh, profile as well. So it has action at non-dopamine receptors that produces some of the non-therapeutic effects. So its histamine antagonism produces both drowsiness and weight gain. It also is an alpha adrenergic uh, antagonism, uh, antagonist sorry, that can cause dizziness and decrease blood pressure. It's also anticholinergic, which causes drowsiness, hypersalivation, blurred vision, constipation, and cognitive impairment. Anticholinergic drugs, particularly those of the muscarnic uh, receptor, oftentimes cause uh, significant difficulties with memory and other cognitive functioning. The biggest concern with clozapine is a risk of developing severe life-threatening agranulocytosis, which is a drop in white blood cell count, which can be uh, very dangerous for individuals, can cause uh, put them at great risk for infection, uh, because those white blood cells are an important part of the immune system. Big side effect is sedation, which may affect compliance. People feel sedated and groggy all the time. They don't want to take those, uh, take these drugs. About 80% of patients uh, have significant weight gain. About 20 pounds or more is not unusual. It is uh, the least prescribed and has some of the worst side effects of the antipsychotic. So this has a really significant side effect profile, despite the fact that it is very effective in treating uh, symptoms. Spiridone uh, is a 5-HT2 and D2 blocker. Uh, the latter improves the antipsychotic and reduces some of the extra pyramidal effects. The, uh, it has acute intermediate 9-hydroxy, oh, sorry, active, the active intermediate 9-hydroxy risperidone has a half-life of 23 hours, so this is an intermediate metabolite of uh, the regular drug. Its side effects include agitation, anxiety, insomnia, headache, nausea, and extra pyramidal symptoms at higher doses. So this is one uh, that may be effective, uh, but again, has some significant uh, side effects. So its uses include, it's included as a first-line drug, uh, particularly when negative symptoms predominate in the first episode. It's indicated for the treatment of schizophrenia, a bipolar disorder, and irritability in individuals with autism. It's associated with reduced aggression, depressive symptomology, and increased energy and global functionings in patients with borderline personality disorder. Uh, there's a long-acting injectable form, which is a significant uh, clinical um, effect uh, because that reduces uh, the difficulties with uh, medication compliance. Uh, so essentially what it is uh, in this injectable form is the risperidone is encapsulated in uh, biodegraded polymer microspheres in a water-based solution, uh, and the singular, single intramuscular dose can last two weeks. So this is really helpful for people who have difficulty maintaining uh, medication compliance. They can come into the clinic every couple weeks and uh, get an injection and then not have to be worried about it. Alonzapine or Zyprexa is another um, antipsychotic uh, that is like clozapine. It's uh, devoid of the white blood cell metabolism uh, and doesn't have that uh, significant side effect. It is both a D2 and 5-HT2 blockade. Uh, the latter is greater, so it has more effects on that 5-HT2. It also is an anti-muscarnic or blocks the acetylcholine receptors. It is shown to improve both positive and negative symptomology in schizophrenia patients. It has, of course, side effects, weight gain, almost as much as with clozapine, sedation, dizziness, and also orthostatic hypotension. Muscular version has been shown to be superior for severe agitation and bipolar mania 
and schizophrenia. So oftentimes these drugs are um, unfortunately less about treating uh, the positive and negative symptomology and more about getting the patient under control. So that's a, a question uh, we have to kind of grapple with is what is the point of providing these medications? So Seroquel is the fifth atypical 5-HT2-D2 antipsychotic comparable with Haldol in reducing positive symptoms with little extra pyramidal symptoms. Um, there is a long-acting version. It's approved for use in acute uh, and maintenance treatment of schizophrenia, bipolar disorder in the manic phase, and as an adjunctive treatment for major depressive disorder and bipolar disorder maintenance, and also adolescent mania. Uh, we'll talk more about the efficacy of adding antipsychotics to uh, SRIs in a later lecture on depression, and there is limited evidence for the efficacy of that. It's shown to be superior to valproate in treating mania. Valproate is also known as Depakote and is oftentimes given uh, to treat um, bipolar disorder patients, and we'll be talking about that in the lectures on bipolar disorder. Um, Abilify is sort of the first of these third, anti uh, third generation antipsychotic drugs. Partial agonist at the D2 receptors and 5-HT1A receptors, as well as, uh, sorry, it's an agonist at D2 and 5-HT1A, and an antagonist of 5-HT2. It confers both anxiolytic and antidepressant actions, uh, has a potential lower risk of extrapyramidal symptoms, tardive dyskinesia, and cognitive impairment, positive effect on the negative symptoms of schizophrenia as well has been shown to augment the effect of SSRIs in patients with depression and anxiety disorders. Um, there are uh, other variants of this drug as well. Uh, Rexulti and Vralar uh, are very similar as well. So these are some um, advances in this particular area. We'll talk more about the depression and anxiety disorders uh, in later uh, lectures. Safras is an adult uh, approved for use in adult schizophrenia and manic or mixed episodes of bipolar disorder. This drug is different. It has to be dissolved under the tongue for complete effectiveness. So it's water soluble. Uh, it's an additional indication for acute treatment of bipolar disorder uh, as an adjunct to lithium or valproic acid, uh, as well as in schizophrenia and bipolar disorder in adolescents. Um, it does have um, some mixed uses in schizophrenia and treating um, manic episodes and bipolar disorder. All of these drugs are associated with weight gain, um, particularly seem to be affecting uh, the lateral hypothalamus neurons that expre express orexins, and these are proteins involved in feeding stimulation. Um, clozapine, risperdone, and olanzapine are associated with increased orexin activity, whereas Haldol uh, and these other drugs did not. This suggests an increased orexin secretion may underline weight and appetite gains of certain atypical drugs. And this is a really significant problem um, for patients, particularly if we're talking about trying to treat an adolescent um, manic depressive or bi bipolar disorder patient, um, that weight gain is really, can be really troublesome and problematic. And so this is uh, something to keep in mind about these drugs. So if you look at the uh, Weight gain, uh, the percent of patients uh, showing weight gain in second generation, generation antipsychotics, uh, highest in clozapine and then olanzapine and uh, do abilify. So these are pretty significant percentages of patients showing uh, significant weight gain. Other side effect of these are diabetes. Atypical antipsychotics were associated with diabetes. Not entirely sure um, if that's associated with glucose metabolism. Uh, we have shown that Zyprexa impacts glucose metabolism independent of weight gain and also increases plasma glucose levels uh, at fasting and after glucose challenge. So one of the biggest side effects of Zyprexa is uh, it is associated with a significant risk for diabetes. Risperidone was much less of a risk factor than olanzapine. So when we start thinking about the relative risk factors of these drugs, this is where we have to start thinking. The problem with these drugs is sudden cardiac death, which is caused by a drug-induced QT interval prolongation, as well as twisted point arrhythmia. Uh, thyridazine is the one associated most with this side effect. Um, so keep that in mind that uh, thyridazine is melaryl, and so this is a significant risk uh, for these particular drugs. <coughs> so 
other uses for antipsychotic medications. Um, so anytime uh, we use a second generation antipsychotic in a disorder that does not present psychotic symptoms, these are generally off-label use. Um, there are some approvals, but generally this is almost always associated with psychotic uh, episodes. So most evidence comes from second generation antipsychotics as adjuncts to other psychotropic medication treatments, so oftentimes used in addition to an um, antidepressant, for example. Again, there are evidence for these uh, treatments is mixed. Uh, I present you with some of the potential uses of these drugs, but they don't work for everyone. And so again, this is something you should definitely uh, be mindful of and uh, think carefully about. So for bipolar disorder, all second generation antipsychotics uh, are approved by the FDA for the treatment of some aspect of bipolar, bipolar disorder, except for uh, these drugs listed here. Um, <clears throat> these second generations can be used uh, as an adjunct to primary treatment medication or as monotherapy. Generally, they're used as an adjunct uh, to either lithium therapy or um, one of the epilepsy drugs like valproic acid. Uh, risperdone, olanzapine, quidipine, apiprazole, and uh, senapine are associated with the treatment of bipolar disorder and approved for that use. Uh, the second generation antipsychotic olanzapine and uh, the SSRI fluoxetine um, is associated and is, or sorry is approved for uh, treatment of acute bipolar depression. And so oftentimes these drugs are used in combination with one another. Uh, to treat both bipolar mania and bipolar depression. Unipolar depression, there are a number of these drugs that have been approved as an adjective treatment for major depressive disorder. I think the data is mixed on them. Um, in particular, when we get the um, addition of side effects, and there is this is very important, there's no evidence of improved functional ability or life quality with the adjective antipsychotic treatment. My money, I don't recommend it, but again, talk to your doctor about um, any of these drugs, but there is no evidence of imp improved life quality or functional ability with the addition of these drugs. Uh, Cariprazine is the newest atypical antipsychotic drug, um, has been approved as an effective adjective treatment for major depressive disorder with antidepressant treatment. Again, um, that hasn't been evaluated in uh, long-term studies. So think about that. Uh, depression, or sorry, dementia is another area in which these drugs are often used. Um, dementia patients can get um, a little uh, psychotic. That is, they oftentimes can hallucinate. They can also get aggressive. Um, and so uh, these drugs have often been used in this population, but there is a dose-dependent risk of death for antipsychotic medication use individuals in individuals with dementia. Now, uh, it's a sort of risk calculus in dealing with dementia patients. These are terminal patients. Uh, dementia is a terminal disease. Um, and so thinking about quality of life uh, versus length of life is uh, an important consideration for you and your family. Um, most cases, um, we say don't use these drugs in elderly um, patients, uh, particularly when we get sort of antipsychotic polypharmacy, that is when we are using multiple um, different drugs, definitely increases mortality risk and pneumonia risk in elderly patients with dementia. So um, the decision to treat elderly individuals, uh, especially with dementia, should involve a thorough risk-benefit analysis and a long conversation with family about whether or not this is the right thing to do for that individual. Uh, each case is different. I take care of my mother who has dementia, uh, and um, she oftentimes uh, sees things that aren't there or remembers people talking to people being in the apartment earlier in the day that weren't there. And some of that's just her memory, and some of it is um, a general disruption in functioning. And so deciding whether or not to use one of these drugs is, is a conversation to have um, with the family. Autism spectrum disorders, agitation and aggression. There's no medication treatment and effective of the. There's no medication that is an effective treatment for the core symptoms of uh, spectrum disorders. Uh, risperdone and apiprazole uh, are currently approved. 
by the FDA for severe irritability treatment in Alzheimer's uh, spectrum disorders. There's certainly large concerns in terms of long-term safety with these drugs and their use in children. Again, we get weight gain, sedation, increased appetite, increased prolactin levels, increase in metabolic syndrome cases, very significant side effect profile um, to treat irritability. So again, conversation to have, uh, decide what's best, but there are significant side effects associated Post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, second-generation antipsychotics are effective in treating the psychotic symptoms of PTSD. They do not treat the underlying disorder itself. Um, so uh, these drugs have been associated with reducing hyperarousal, re-experiencing, avoidance, nightmares, and flashbacks in those war veteran patients. Uh, so it certainly can help improve quality of life. Treating the underlying uh, PTSD and not the symptoms, I think, is an important of that and in the lecture on um, <coughs> uh, one of my earlier lectures that covers uh, MDMA or ecstasy I talk about using MDMA to treat PTSD disorder uh, using that and uh, other hallucinogenic, or sorry, hallucinogenic drugs so look for that because there is some hope um, for using uh, MDMA and treating the underlying PTSD um, risperdone monotherapy has been shown to be effective in treating women uh, with PTSD from domestic violence or sexual abuse. So um, these are potential uses of, of these drugs for treating PTSD. Obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, there are other adjunctive treatments that are more effective than the addition of an antipsychotic drug. So I don't think this is a particularly good use for these drugs. Lots of... Um, Side effects may exacerbate OCD symptoms. Borderline personality disorder, this is a tough disorder to treat. No drug has been shown to be effective in treating bipolar disorder. Most pharmacological interventions target some specific disorder symptoms. Um, but uh, you can get some impulsive anger and aggression uh, symptoms abated uh, through first generation antipsychotics, but this is often outweighed by the side effects. Second generation antipsychotics have been shown to reduce uh, affective instability, impulsivity, psychosis, and interpersonal dysfunction. Um, this is one of those disorders often people will mature out of, but not always. And so this may be short-term need for these drugs. It's entirely uh, it's an important question. And certainly treating the underlying cause of this disorder is an important Best evidence-based treatment for borderline personality disorder is dialectic behavior therapy, which is a specific form of cognitive behavior therapy. So that's the best um, evidence-based treatment. Certainly possible to um, treat some of the symptoms uh, with these drugs, but the best treatment is this dialectical behavioral therapy. All right, that is second-generation antipsychotics. Uh, we'll start up talking about uh, depression and antidepressants in our next set of lectures.